Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. Today we are on location at the Retzer Nature Center. We are shooting the earned edition jersey release for the Milwaukee Bucks. <laughs> that's, that's movie magic. That is. Now with regards to this shoot, I'm taking you guys behind the scenes. I'm trying a couple technical things out with two cameras that I got. So the Panasonic GH5 and the Sony A7S III. And basically what I'm trying to do is color match the, the cameras as best as possible. And to do that, I'm gonna be using Emotive Colors, their post-production LUTs to get these cameras to really not only match as close as possible, but to their claims, get it to look like Ari Alexa footage. So if you haven't, so check out my last video where I kind of walk you through and show you how to install the s Cinetone. And I'm really happy with the colors that are coming out of the camera just with that picture profile. Just gonna walk you guys through the, the space here. So basically just got a bunch of trees, snow, it's melting, it's super icy, but it's a beautiful day. We've been experiencing like a 40 degree heat wave recently, which has been super nice. Um, it's been very cold in Wisconsin, so we welcome the warm weather. I'm gonna be shooting in a flat picture profile with both, shooting V-Log on the GH5 and S-Log 3 on the Sony a7S III. Just a couple technical specs that Emotive Color is recommending. One is set the Sony a7S III to an ISO of 800. They're also recommending that you shoot in their all eye format. I'm not gonna be doing that, unfortunately. My, my memory card's not fast enough, but I'm gonna be shooting in the XAVCS HD in 422 10-bit. So I'm gonna be using this spot here to do a side-by-side -side comparison with the a7S III and GH5. This is the Sony A7S III. And now we have the Panasonic GH5. So with the Panasonic GH5, Emotive Color recommends that you set that ISO balance to ISO 400, and then you also shoot in their all-eye intro format. So I've been shooting in 422 10-bit at 60 frames per second, and their all-eye format, so that's about like 200 megabits per, per second. So obviously these two cameras, you can't really compare apples for apples, but I mean, to be honest, the GH5 really holds its own. And I think these colors aren't too far off. And I'm, I'm really happy with the results. All right guys, so I provided a link to the emotive color in the description. Uh, here on the page, you can have the option to, to purchase. Here I just selected my Sony a7S III. Uh, you'll get a couple zip files. I have my old GH5 file there. You can see my Sony a7S III file. I'm extracting that. You'll see folder structure along with some documentation. Here we have a reference, um, sort of like waveform scope with a breakdown of our highlights, you know, skin tone, shadows, um, some reference markers. And here we have our supporting files followed by images. Just a couple of different scopes here to, to kind of view and look over. Here we have our actual color conversion files. We have this 65 times option. Um, here's our A7S III, same thing. Images, uh, color conversion supporting files. We shot in our PP8, uh, Sony S-Log3, Cine Gamut 3. We also have this Alexa PDF document which gives you a breakdown in how to insert these supporting files. So. Now we have Premiere open. I have two clips loaded on my timeline, my Sony A7S III clip here in this mango color, and then the Panasonic GH5 footage in this blue color here. In the effects, you can see the Lumetri color tab. You can click that drop down menu, and you can add an instance of Lumetri color. As I mentioned, we're gonna be adding two instances of Lumetri color to the Sony A7S III footage. It's gonna be important to rename each instance so we know what you know, files were plugging into what instance of Lumetri Color. So for this, I'm going to assume that you at least know the layout of Premiere. Now looking into the basic correction tab, you'll see this input lock drop down menu. You have the option to load some pre-installed converters. Then we have our creative tab. And here we're gonna be, you know, applying a look, opening the emotive color LUT. I have my Sony A7S III LUTs preloaded here. I have my supporting files. We have our couple different picture profiles here. We sh we're shooting in S-Log3, Gamut3 Cine. So that's important if you shot in S-Log2 
or SOG3, gamut 3, you would be using these pre-converters prior to color correcting. So in the basic color corrector input LUT tab, we're going to browse and we're going to insert our, in our color support files, we're going to drive, we're going to look into our you know, PP8 SOG3 converter there. So we have that loaded in. Uh, looking at our vector or our waveform scopes here, we see that the image didn't change at all. So now we're going to go into our creative tab and we're going to be loading uh, pre-converter, so just getting our exposure correct. So we have negative 0.33 stops all the way down to plus two. We're going to be using negative 0.6. So just going in and again selecting that negative 0.6 stop pre-converter. So we saw our waveform update. Nothing too much changed. You can use this intensity scroll bar here to really dial in the, the amount of exposure correction that you, you would like to see. We can also load in negative two stops just to see what that does to the waveform. But we're going to go back to negative 0.6 stops. So now diving into our you know, effect controls. In our effect controls panel, we're going to add another instance of Lumetri color. So here we're going to rename it again. We're going to just name it conversion and plus post. So this is where we're going to dial in and make our final color correction tweaks. So we see our two instances of Lumetri, each one uniquely named. So we're going to dive back in. At this top effects tab, you can switch between the two Lumetri instances. And now for this last instance, we're actually going to dive in and apply our main color converter. So we have, you know, a wide range of different converters here. We have um, these converters unique to S-Log3, S Gamut 3 Cine. We also have our 65 times. We're going to open up and see our wide range of different white balance options. We have tungsten, our daylight, and also our 4200 Kelvin scale. Just going to open up this documentation. So, so 65 times allows for gradient performance in software with trilinear interpolation. So most have trilinear. Um, Premiere does, so we're going to be using this high scale 65 times option. So just browse through. Again, we're going to locate that option in our color conversions. And we're going to make sure to select that daylight high scale. And now we really see our, our waveform really expand and our color conversion take place. So we have a little bit of some blown out highlights. Uh, the last thing we're going to be applying is our auto black levels. So we have different ranges from level one through four. Uh, one being pretty light. And just looking at this waveform here, we want to get those, um, those waveforms. So here we're applying our Luma waveform just to, it's just a little bit more accurate in terms of our shadows and highlights. So we're going to go into our, making sure we're in our conversion post Lumetri, applying in the creative tab, our auto black level. We're going to start with one. So here we have one. I'm just going to load in uh, level two just for you guys to see what it does to the waveform here. So it's, it's crushing our blacks just slightly. Um, nothing, nothing too bad. So really making sure that we're using this waveform scope to dial in our, you know, our exposure and our color correction settings. So here we can use in our color wheels, we can use the shadows dial here to really tune in and adjust our shadows and midtones to really dial in and nail the exposure to how you want it basically. So this is all done really by, by eye. So here we have, we're gonna go down, 
make sure we have our vector scope off. This is just to increase the size here of our waveform. So based on our reference image, we had it, they had the highlights down around 178. So I'm dialing that down just slightly. And we're getting, you can really see the dynamic range from the Sony A7S III. So that's, that's pretty much it. So we here, we have our pre-white balance tab, loading our vector scope. And here you can see that, you know, we have our white balance correctly set along this line between the yellow and red channels. And here just turning off our pre-white balance and our conversion and post Lumetri color. You can see how that affects the image. So again, just dialing between the, the two instances of Lumetri. So now that we have our emotive color conversion LUTs applied to our Sony A7S III footage, now we're going to dive into the Panasonic GH5. This is another shot here. I shot it on the gimbal on the GH5, but just gonna do some handheld here, the A7S III. So this, this scenery here is pretty bright. You got some hot spots, you got some uneven lighting, but I th still think it's a good test, uh, on location test, to really push these cameras in their dynamic range and their, their color science. So in this instance of, you know, the Panasonic GS5, and just for the sake of time, I'm just going to be applying one instance of Lumetri Color. Rename that. So we're going to have our pre and white balance. And also calling this post-production. So I'm just using one instance of Lumetri Color for this. So in the input luck section of our basic converter, here I'm just going into our GH5 folder. Here's our post LUTs that we're going to be using for our color conversion. Diving back into Premiere, so input LUT in the basic color correction tab. Going to go into our GH5 folder. We have our VLOG converter. So again, the image won't change. Nothing will happen on our waveform scope. Just going to browse and select our GH5 post-production. And I like to use, again, the 65 times. Here we're going to use daylight linear. I found that that image tends to look the best. So here we see our waveform update, our image change, we're no longer in that log look. And here you can see not as much dynamic range as the A7S III, so I'm gonna crank the, the shadows down just a bit. See so our highlights are clipped a little bit, so I'm gonna bring those down. You can see our image update. I'm going to bring the midtones down just a bit. And this is looking like a good starting point to now go back and match as best we can with the Sony A7S III. So overall, the image doesn't look too far off in terms of you know color cast and color tone. I'm liking what I see so far. Really, you can tell in the tree trunks here you know, the colors are not looking too far off. But just to make sure, we're gonna use our Parade RGB to really go in and dial, dial in our color cast and make sure that our color is looking, you know, fairly close. So in combination with this and our eye, we're gonna get the best looking image. We're gonna use our color wheels and basically get an image that looks as close to matching as we can, so. Going to go through just my shadows just a bit. And just kind of toggling back and forth. I'm going to tweak my highlights just a bit more. Going to add a little bit more orange just to get those tones to match in the tree trunks with the Sony A7S III footage. And I think that's looking pretty good. 
So, you know, using our RGB parade, our waveforms, in combination with, you know, two instances of Lumetri and the Sony A7S III footage for our pre and white balance, and then our conversion and post. You know, using our basic color correction settings along with our creative, you know, looks, we're able to really transform this image and get some beautiful looking footage. And in the process, we were able to match our footage with the Panasonic GH5. So really happy with the results. I'm just going to show you guys some more behind the scenes with this Lumetri color converter applied to the footage so you guys can really see what, you know, what it was like on set and the colors and tones that we're getting with the Sony A7S III footage. So. Check this out, friend. This looks dope. Really sick. Oh. Uh -oh. That's even better than like a fishing wire look. Yeah. Seriously? Hell yeah. Oh my gosh, and this like little bit of sun is, looks pretty cool. So that's a wrap. The shoot was super, super fun, super exciting. Um, I, I took the drone up, got some shots of the, the whole nature center. I uh, got some close-up shots of like the trees and you know just some establishing b-roll. Uh, we took the jersey and did a couple different things with it. We, we hung it on like fishing wire and we actually got lucky and found like a branch that looked almost exactly like a, a deer antler. And so we kind of propped it up and used it like that and it's kind of those like creative shots that you kind of just think of on the fly once you have like your main shots nailed down that end up looking the best. So if you guys could check the description, go to the Bucks Pro Shop, you'll find it there. This shirt is really cool. It's got some nice features, like the Nike swoosh is embossed. You got some antlers that run up along the side and you got just some other interesting details on the back of the jersey too that really make this one special and kind of set it apart from the rest. I'm really happy that I'm able to pair up the Sony A7S III footage with my GH5. Um, you know, with this emotive color lot, just, you know, getting some really good colors out of both cameras and um, is super important. So I'm really happy about that, really happy about the workflow. I provided links in the description to, to emotive color and where you can purchase their products. I've used their post-production lots in, you know, for the last year or so on, on a wide range of projects. And I really love what, you know, that plugin and that software has been able to do with the color science in the Panasonic GH5. So, so I thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys learned something. My name is Jose. I've been your One Orbit Captain. Um, like, subscribe, and hit that bell. And if you already have, then I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.